Hi, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today, we're covering the new Divide Blend mode that was introduced in Affinity Photo 1.9. To explain the Divide mode, we'll use it to correct the colours in this image which I shot in Manchester one evening. In case you think that the people are standing too close to each other, I did shoot this back in 2008. As you can see, the image is suffering from an orange colour cast caused by the street lighting. What I want is to show you how to correct this using the Divide Blending mode, but without causing problems in the scene. I'll start by adding a new fill layer to the image, which is filled with white. You might find that yours is a different colour depending on your active colour when you create the layer. The reason I want to start with white is that it makes the fill layer invisible when I set the Blend mode to Divide. To be sure you have a white layer, go to your Swatches Studio panel and choose the grey swatches from the drop down. You can then click on the white swatch which fills the layer with white. Now I want to show you something that will help you understand the Divide Blend mode. Watch what happens to the image brightness if I click one of the light grey swatches and use that to fill the layer. The image becomes lighter. Then if I pick a grey swatch that's around the mid-tone grey, the image becomes even brighter. The way the Divide Blend mode works is that values of the colour channels are divided by the value of the fill colour on the layer. When the layer was at white, it had a value of 1. If we divide any number by 1, it stays the same, which is why a white layer doesn't have any effect on the image. But when we use a mid-tone grey, it has a value of 50% or 0.5. If you divide a number by 0.5, you double it, which creates the brighter image. We can even take this to an extreme by filling our layer with black, which has a value of 0. When we do this, we turn our image white, because a number divided by 0 becomes infinity. Now for those of you who are big into maths, ignore 0 divided by 0. For the purposes of the Divide Blend mode, you still get white. Now don't worry about the mathematics, because you don't need to understand it to use this technique. What you do need to understand is that if you use the Divide Blend mode with a dark colour, you will lighten the image. And the darker the colour you use, the lighter the image becomes. But when we use a light colour with the Divide Blend mode, we don't lighten the image as much, and white has no effect. Now let's see how we can use this to fix the orange colour cast in the image. The reason we see the colour cast in the first place is because we don't have the correct balance between red, green and blue. If we take the example of this grey stonework and sample its colour, we'll find more red than green or blue. That's what's creating the colour cast. What the Divide Blend mode gives us is an easy way to bring the three colour channels back into balance. The way to do this is to sample the colour from an area that should be neutral. I can easily do this using the Colour Picker tool in the Tools palette. When I click on the stonework, it samples that colour and applies it to the fill layer. But look what happens. Because the stonework is quite dark, it makes the image too bright. Instead, what I need to do is pick a light area that still has a colour cast like the stonework near to the light. Now here's something to watch out for. If you click on the image to sample a colour, whilst the fill layer is visible, you won't sample the colour correctly. Instead, you'll sample the corrected colour, and this cancels out the effect of the layer. What you need to do is disable the layer before taking the sample. Then when you turn the layer on again, you'll see the correction. Now, there's a second way to sample the colour in the image that's potentially more helpful to us. If I click and drag on the Sample tool in the Swatches panel, as I move over the image, I see a magnified area. This can help me see the pixel area that I'm sampling. Better still, I also see a readout showing the values of the red, green and blue channels for that point. This tells me which of the channels is out of balance at that point. If I move over an area that should be a neutral colour, the three colour channels should have roughly the same value. But if one of them is a higher value than the others, it creates a colour cast. Then when I release the mouse button, I take a colour sample at that point. This then appears in the Swatches panel. If I'm happy with the sample, I can apply it to the fill layer by clicking on it. This neutralises the colour cast, but it's still affecting the brightness of the image a little bit too much. If you look at the area around the light, you can see that it's becoming blown out. I don't mind this happening a little bit, but the effect is just too strong at the moment. I think we can probably do better using a trick I'll show you now. 
So far we've taken a colour sample that corrects the colour cast although it may not be perfect. But if we use the controls in the Colour Studio panel we can tweak our results. Let's start by checking if we can improve the colour correction. To do this we can use the RGB view in the colour panel. Be sure the fill layer is selected in the layers panel before doing this. This will then show the red, green and blue channel values for the colour that's filling the layer. We can then use the sliders in the Colour Studio panel to adjust the fill colour. But before making a change I'm going to first take a snapshot in the snapshots panel so we can compare our results later. Now if I increase the red slider in the colour panel it adds green to the image and if I reduce it it adds red. You can see what each of the colour controls will do by looking at the opposite side of the slider. Often you don't need to make any fine adjustments to the colour balance at all but sometimes you have these complex lighting situations or it may not be possible to take a sample at the area you want. That's when you can use this technique. In this image I probably want to have a yellow colour cast still on the ground because of the street light, but at the same time I want to have a cooler blue tint to the stonework higher up in the building. Now we have the colours correctly balanced we need to do something to prevent the light areas becoming blown out. Once we have the correct colour in our fill layer to neutralise the colour cast the colour itself is too dark. We can fix this by making it lighter using the HSL adjustments in the Colour Studio panel. When I move the lightness slider to the right it creates a lighter version of the same colour. Now when I turn off the layer you can see that it's hardly blowing out the light areas of the stonework. This is much better but the colour cast is back because our fill colour isn't intense enough. The way to fix this is to increase the saturation. Let's take another snapshot now and call this refined correction. If I turn off the filled layer you can see the original image which is quite different from the correction. Now let's compare this to the initial correction we made by returning to that snapshot. That made a reasonable job of correcting the colour but it's caused the image to become too bright. When we return to our refined correction it's clearly better. So that's how you can use the divide blend mode for colour correction. Sampling the colour is important but you need to understand how the different components of colour affect the result. This allows you to use the RGB and HSL sliders to refine your results and give you total control. I hope that you found today's video helpful. If you have please let me know in the YouTube comments and please share this with other Affinity Photo users. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you.